Welcome to day six of the 100 Days of Code. Yesterday, we learned all about if statements and being able to choose which code path we go down based on a question that we ask. Today, we're going to look at the ELIF statement that allows us to ask more questions and get more options in the same code block. The ELIF statement is really, really powerful. It allows us to ask a second, third, fourth, or 156th question to the computer based on the same inputs we started with. This means that I can say, if this, or this, or this, or this, and then everyone else, so I can have lots more different specific states. Before we start though, bit of a warning, elifs have to go in a certain place. You can have as many elifs as you want, but they must go after the if and before the last else. This is because the else means everything else. And so you can't have options before that. Here we've got a reasonably simple login program using the skills we've learned so far. But you know and I know this is not the way the internet works. You don't build a website where only one person can log in and it tells everyone else to get on your bike. This website is fundamentally broken, so let's add some elifs to expand upon it. I'm going to make some room just after the code for my if statement and before my else. I'm going to make sure that I backspace because I need to be in line with my if and my else that it's all connected to. And I'm going to write elif, short for, of course, else if. An elif works just like an if statement in that we do need to ask it a question. So let's see if we can deal with Suzanne. Now, it's a very simple program at the moment. It's just saying hello specifically to Suzanne in a different way. But if I run this program, I can tell it that I'm Mark and get a specific message for Mark. I can tell it that I am Suzanne and get a specific message for Suzanne. Or I can tell it that I'm Johnny and get the message that everyone else gets. This is a very, very simple way of adding as many of those as you want. If I have more users, well, it's very, very easy. I click after my previous elif, but before my else. Make some space by pressing enter, making sure that I backspace so I'm in line with the indentation on the left hand side, and then add my next elif. You can go and add as many of these elifs as you want to any program and have much more flexibility about how it works. Now, before we carry on, this isn't much of a login system because there's no password. So let's go and add some password code. Now, how do we check that a user's username and password are correct? Well, think about the way I said that. Username and password. When we speak in English, we can join things by adding Boolean expressions like and, or, or not. In this case, we literally need to go into our if statement and change the condition a little bit. If the username matches with mark and the password is the same as password because mark isn't very secure then we'll log them in let's change suzanne so if the username is suzanne and the password is equal to suzanne's password which is a little bit more secure than mark's then the only way that these if statements work now is if it matches both of them Let's give that a go. So my username is Mark and my password is password. Well, hey, I've logged into Mark's account. Let's see what happens if I put my username as Mark and my password as Mark. Doesn't want me there. How about if I try Suzanne's? So Suzanne and boom, we get in nice and easily. Common errors. Well, Apart from the ones we've seen before, there's only really one common error that people get with elifs, and it's putting it in the wrong order. Take a look at this code on the screen at the moment. It's the same program, but we've broken it by putting something in the wrong place. Let's run it and see if we can track down that problem. Straight away, it's pointed to line seven, our elif, and said that it's invalid syntax. And let's have a look why. What's happening before line seven? That's right, we've put our else in. 
the way we've structured this program, we've said, if Mark logs in, say hello to Mark. But for everyone else, say go away. Is the equivalent of us going, uh, actually, if it's Suzanne, uh, 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 it's too late. Uh, that's not how the program can be structured for it to work. So this entire chunk of code needs to be moved. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to make some room, making sure to backspace. So I'm in line with the ifs and the else's that I want to connect it to. And I'm going to paste back in there. That code now should work perfectly. If you're looking for more of a challenge, once again, I've broken some code. Take a look. Okay, challenge time. I'm gonna be asking you to go off and create a program that does something very similar to that login system that we were just looking at. It's gonna ask for a user's name and their password, but it's gonna give a specific greeting to each individual user and show them a specific personalized greeting that will give them a very nice start to their day. You must include at least three people as well as an else command that deals with people that shouldn't be logging in. Once that's complete, don't forget to share it with the hashtag replit 100 days of code, either if you publish it to the community or on social media and see just how the community reacts to your simple login system. We'll see you back here tomorrow for the end of the first week where we're going to look at a special idea called nesting where we can put an if statement within an if statement. See you tomorrow.